Today we will explore why there is an invisible Luigi right here in Paper Mario the Origami King when we sequence break the game. We'll look at why these invisible Luigis behave so strangely when they become visible, and one of the most important steps in this process is sneaking past an invisible Luigi without getting caught. So yeah, I hope this sounds interesting, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Here's a refresher of what normally happens in this part of the game. When you make it to Mushroom Island, you find that there's a big block of ice covering the house on the island. If you melt this ice and head into the house, you can't make it into the backyard of the island because the door leading to the backyard has no handle. It's really important to note that you can't normally make it into the backyard without first getting the handle. When you head to Full Moon Island and open the treasure chest there, you find the handle for the backyard door on Mushroom Island. When you head back to Mushroom Island and finally make it into the backyard, Luigi is resting there on a lawn chair to greet you. So, remember how you can't normally enter the backyard until you get the mushroom handle? What would happen if we clipped to the other side of the island early before getting the mushroom handle? As you can see, the lawn chair is empty. Luigi's not there. But that doesn't stop Olivia from popping out and saying, Luigi! At this point, I'm worried that the game is going to crash at any moment. In my What Happens If We Clone Partners in Origami King video, we saw that the game often crashes if we have dialogue boxes pop up from missing characters. But Luigi's dialogue comes up here and the game doesn't crash. In another past video, we looked at how fixing a bridge can crash Paper Mario the Origami King, but this invisible Luigi talking doesn't crash the game. After this Luigi's dialogue is complete, the invisible Luigi actually appears and joins your party. What is so special about this invisible Luigi that his dialogue doesn't crash the game, but other invisible characters do crash the game when they speak? Before we keep exploring this question, we have to take a look at how games store story progress for a moment. Some games, like the original Paper Mario, have a value in the game's memory that stores story progress. As you progress through the game, this value updates, and from a programming perspective, this is an efficient way to track the game's story progress. If you revert your story progress to an earlier part of the game, and there are glitches that let you do this, then you can essentially time travel between different timelines. And this kind of sequence breaking is one of my favorite things to experiment with in video games. So let's sequence break this part of Paper Mario the Origami King, where Luigi joins our party. The regular story progress in this part of the game is, first you get the mushroom handle, then you open the door to the backyard, and after that you see Luigi and Luigi joins your party. Right now, we skipped straight to step 3, and we had Luigi already join our party. Now, let's go back. So let's get the mushroom handle now, and then after that we'll open the door to the backyard. So we're essentially traveling time, back in time, so, will a second Luigi be waiting for us on the lawn chair once we open this door? Well, we might expect that, but unfortunately Paper Mario the Origami King wasn't programmed this way. If this game had a single memory address for story progress, then we could get a second Luigi here. But instead, a lot of story events are kept track of with booleans, which are values that are either true or false. In this specific case, the Kanoko Island Rescued Luigi Boolean, which keeps track of if we've spoken with Luigi on Mushroom Island, becomes true. Here's a fun fact, Kinoko means mushroom in Japanese, so a lot of parts of the game's code have the word Kinoko instead of mushroom in it. This Boolean value becomes true after we talk to Luigi and he joins our party, so even if we sequence break the game and travel back in time, we don't have a second Luigi join us. You might be wondering, why are there two Luigis in the thumbnail of this video if Boolean values keep track of story progress and prevent us from time traveling and getting a second Luigi? And that's not a question you might have ever thought you'd be asking yourself. But it is a very good question, and the madness with Luigi and one of the most shocking turn of events is just beginning. During my experimentation with this, I wanted to find out as much as possible about these invisible Luigis and try different sequence breaks. If you go within a certain proximity of this invisible Luigi, he catches you, and you can't move anymore because the dialogue sequence is triggered. So all you can do is fall to the ground and talk to Luigi and have this invisible Luigi join your party and that Boolean value from earlier will become true and we won't be able to get a second Luigi. So I wanted to try to sneak past this invisible Luigi into the basement of the house before the invisible Luigi noticed me to see what would happen. 
And I did not expect what happened once I made it into the basement. Luigi was automatically added to my party, even though we haven't spoken with Luigi on the island yet. This room that we just entered, this is a map where Luigi is forced to be your partner when you first enter, even if you haven't rescued Luigi yet. I have a video where we look at what happens if you skip to the final boss in Paper Mario the Origami King, and something similar, but not exactly like this, happens in that video with Bowser. You might be wondering why it's so amazing that Luigi was forced to join our party here. Do you remember the boolean value from earlier that keeps track of if we've spoken with Luigi or not yet? Since we haven't spoken with Luigi on Mushroom Island yet, this value isn't true yet. So if we go back upstairs to the backyard of Mushroom Island, a Luigi should still be there waiting for us, right? And sure enough, when we get up there, there's an invisible Luigi on the lawn chair waiting for us. It's a bit funny to see Olivia talking to an empty lawn chair thinking it's Luigi when Luigi is actually right behind us. Since we're now in another moment where we have dialogue from an invisible character coming up and we already have a copy of that character in our party, I'm even more worried about the game crashing suddenly at any moment. But after some dialogue, a second Luigi materializes out of thin air. Either Olivia's origami powers are truly phenomenal, or everyone here is severely hallucinating, and I'll let you be the judge of that. One of the strangest things that happen when we have two Luigis in our party is how they behave. If we move too far away, one of the Luigis stops following us, and the second Luigi turns into a ghost that sticks very close to Mario. This feels like I'm doing a magic trick, because once we enter this door, I can go, Haha! Was this your Luigi? This second Luigi was in this house all along! This was a sleight of hand trick! If you hammer these Luigis, they behave even more strangely. If you hammer your Luigis, and this isn't a sentence that I thought that I would say before, only one of them gets squished, not both of them. And my heart dropped when I saw this. My Luigi stopped following me. Should I really be surprised that my Luigis don't want to follow me anymore after I've been hammering them? The strange thing is that I could push one of the Luigis by walking into them, but not the other one. When I hammered the other Luigi, both of them decided that it was time to start following me again. If you hammer your Luigis and you lose one of them or both of them, you have to try to perform some island ritual dance to please the Luigis into joining you on your quest again, running around the island, jumping and hammering, just hoping that the Luigis will take you back and accept you again. I really want to see what happens if we go to the Origami Craftsman Toad with these Luigis and how having two Luigis would affect these cutscenes, but first I needed to bring these Luigis to some other islands to see what would happen if we do that. So first, let's take one Luigi and leave Mushroom Island. Bye, Mushroom Island! When we get to Full Moon Island, we pull into the dock. The game saves and... Oh look! Luigi's already waiting on the dock here! He sure swam here quickly! I wanted to see what would happen if we left Mushroom Island with two Luigis. Would we still keep both Luigis if we went to another island? Unfortunately, when we arrive at another island, there's just one Luigi waiting for us on the dock. But, oh, wait! The second Luigi is right there! They were just standing so close together that I thought it was just one Luigi, but hooray, we have two Luigis still. And now that we know that both of our Luigis are safe, let's head back to the main story again and the Origami Craftsman Toad. There's a lot happening in these cutscenes here, especially now that we have two Luigis. Think about how this cutscene normally happens, and think about how it might be different now that we have two Luigis. Normally in the story, there's a book that we can't reach. So you hammer Luigi, you jump onto him, you get the book, the book spawns a thousand-fold arm magic circle, you use the thousand-fold arm circle to tear away this wall, you free the toad, and after the toad tells his story, Luigi runs away. So think about how that could be different now that we have two Luigis. What could possibly happen? And now, the fun with two Luigis begins. We enter the room of the origami craftsman with two Luigis, but once we're here, we only have one Luigi. If we get far enough from Luigi that he has to teleport to us, then he starts to look like a ghost. Hammering him doesn't turn him back to normal this time. I moon jumped onto the origami creation and Luigi appeared there. Hammering still didn't get him to follow me. Just a reminder that Olivia doesn't let you leave this room, so once you enter this room you're stuck in here until you complete the story part of this room. Normally, hammering this bookshelf is what causes Luigi to suggest that you hammer him so that you could climb up there. But this time, since Luigi is in a strange state, 
We finally have the game softlock. I can't believe we were able to get the dialogue from all these invisible characters, multiple Luigi's, and we did so much without softlocking the game, and we had to come this far to softlock the game. Mario can't move in this current state, he can't jump, he can't open the menu or do anything. The game is now stuck in this exact state that we're in until you turn off the game. So let's try again. What happens if we try to rescue the Origami Craftsman Toad as normally as possible? Other than the fact that we had two Luigi's a moment ago. Everything goes pretty normally at first. When we tear off this sticker, Luigi is trying to walk over to be at our side, but he's just stuck there, and I thought that was a little strange, but not something really weird. But I couldn't help but laugh when this scene faded out and the next cutscene started playing. Luigi's normally beside Mario in this cutscene where we talk to the origami master, but we can see Luigi's feet in the background. He's still running in place in the exact same spot as before. We see some dialogue from the invisible Luigi, and eventually the invisible Luigi runs off in search of other keys. Our other Luigi keeps running in place in the background for the rest of the cutscene. I checked the menu screen after all of this dialogue was done, and it said that Luigi was still part of our party. When I got close to the Luigi that was running in place, he started following us, and it looks like we can continue the game with this Luigi. Let's try some more sequence breaking. Here's another experiment. Normally, you need Luigi's help to get onto this bookshelf. What happens if we moon jump up here and open the book ourselves? When we read the book, a thousandfold arm magic circle appears as normal. And watch this part really, really closely. As we continue, we can pull aside the wall no problem, but the tear off option doesn't appear. We can't tear off the sticker here and save the origami toad. And just a reminder, we can't leave this room until we go through this entire sequence, so if we can't save this toad, then we're stuck in this room forever. If we ask Olivia for a hint, she says something about Luigi's idea, even though Luigi didn't suggest to us that we should hammer him and jump onto him to get to the book yet because we already did that. But one of the most interesting things here, and those of you that were watching really closely might have noticed this, is that this book is closed again. Normally when you hammer this shelf, Luigi suggests to hammer him so that you could get up on top of the shelf. But since we already brought the book down, when Mario hammered the shelf this time, it made the book close again. So now, we can open the book a second time, and even though the wall has already been torn away, a second thousandfold arm magic circle appears, even though there's nothing to tear away with the thousandfold arm magic circle. Maybe we can use the thousandfold arm magic circle to tear off this sticker? The tear off option still isn't appearing for this sticker on the toad, and Olivia's hint is suggesting that we read the book that we've already read twice. Now, if you want to confuse someone who knows this game well, send them a screenshot of this part of the game saying you're stuck here and don't know what to do, because this is something that's completely wrong and shouldn't normally happen in the game. We can't grab anything with the thousandfold arms here, and we can't pull that sticker off the toad. It looks like he's going to be stuck there forever, because we're stuck at this part of the game now and there's nothing we can do to progress. And the thousandfold arm circle disappears after we press the B button to exit, since the wall is already torn off. Let's do one more sequence break experiment at this part of the game, because there's just so many possibilities for what you can do here with two Luigis, and you just have no idea what to expect as you're doing this. What would happen if we hammer Luigi when he says to hit him, but then we moon jump up there and don't use Luigi for help? We can spawn the thousandfold arm magic circle normally. If we read the book again immediately, we can spawn a second thousandfold arm magic circle, even though this shouldn't normally happen. If we read the book a third time, we can't keep spawning more and more thousandfold arm magic circles. So let's go save this toad now. While we're using the thousandfold arm technique, you might notice the, oh, a little more, dialogue coming up from this side. Luigi should normally be standing there, but he's currently still squished from the hammer standing off to the side. This time, we are able to peel off the sticker and save the Origami Craftsman. The Origami Craftsman says some dialogue about noticing that Luigi is here too, but he doesn't think it's strange that Luigi is squished and standing off to the side. I was a bit scared of a game crash or soft lock at this part of the game again, because Luigi should normally stand here beside Mario. But instead, 
He's squished in the background, still waiting for Mario to jump on him. It's like when you go to shake someone's hand and you just leave them hanging there. That's what we did to Luigi right now. We squished him with the hammer and he's just waiting to be jumped on. We see dialogue come up from the invisible Luigi that should be here, and the game works fine. When the invisible Luigi runs away in search of keys, I check the pause menu, and Luigi wasn't part of our party anymore. This squished Luigi didn't want to be jumped on anymore. Jumping on him and hammering him didn't do anything here. I thought, okay, let's see what happens if we leave the room and come back again. And once we enter the room again, Luigi is gone! What did you do with Luigi, Origami Craftsman? It was just the two of you in here! What did you do with him? I know it was you! Are there other issues and interesting findings with cloning partners in this game? Absolutely, and I have more videos coming out soon with experimentation about other partners like Bobby, so make sure that you are subscribed to this channel if you would like to see those videos. A big thank you to you for watching this video, hope you enjoyed it, hope you found this stuff interesting, wishing all of you a lovely day, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters, thank you all so much for checking out this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care everybody.